Okay, so um, we talked about arithmetic and geometric sequences. They're the actual list of numbers um, that you're either adding the same number each time or you're multiplying the same number each time. Now, a series is what happens when you take all those numbers in a sequence and add them up to a certain point. Let's say you wanted to find um, the sum of the first 10 terms of a sequence. That's going to be an arithmetic series. Um, now, where you would use something like this, investments are a great way to or a great place for a uh, great example of, of where these series are used. You make an investment for so long, over a period of time, you add up those, those investments and maybe their um, profits that you've made, uh, the interest maybe, and you add those up and that's a series. Um, so the sum of a finite arithmetic sequence okay, is called an arithmetic series. These are numbers that I'm adding each time. Um, so I can find a, a series... Uh, would be like, you know, 4, 7, 10, 13, and so on. I maybe want to add up the first 10 terms of that sequence, and that's an arithmetic series. So I have two formulas given here. This formula right here, you're probably not going to use very much because you have to know the last term. So up here, let's say I want to find the sum of the um, sequence up to the 15th term. Well, I don't know what the 15th term is. I'd have to figure it out. Um, and that just means I'd have to go back and use the formula we used before. But that's more work because this formula here actually incorporates finding the last term. You see that n minus 1 times d and the a sub 1? That looks very similar to what we did before. So I actually prefer using this formula all the time. So if I'm doing an arithmetic series, I'm going to use that formula there. Now the only, um, the only variable that's new here is s sub n. And S sub n is the sum of the first 10 terms. Or, I'm sorry, not the first 10, first n terms. Depends on what, what kind of series you're looking for. If it's a 20-term uh, sequence and you want to add them up, you want to find the sum of the first 20 terms. So you want to find S sub 20. If I want to find the sum of the first 100 terms, I'd find S sub 100. All the other variables are the same as before. Okay, I have a word problem here. A theater has a section where the seating can be arranged. So the first row has 11 seats, the second row has 15, the third row has 19, and so on. Um, so let's say I, I own a theater and I'm putting on a new section of seats. And I want to figure out how much I can make from, from um, filling up that section with people. All right, so, you know, usually when you go to a theater, it looks like this. You know, as you go back, so the stage would be here. As you go back from the stage, the rows get larger and larger. So they get somewhat something like this. And that's what's going on here. I have 11 seats in the first row, 15 in the second row, and so on. Um, and I have enough room for 30 rows of seats. So how many seats are in the section? Well, I could take 11 plus 15 plus 19 plus 23 and add those 30 numbers up. Or I could just use a formula, and I'm going to use the formula... S sub n equals n over 2 times 2 a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. Now the brackets are just fancy parentheses, that's all they are. So now I'm going to start plugging in numbers. So I want to find S sub 30, because there's 30 rows in the, in the section. N is however many um, numbers I'm adding up, and there's 30. So 30 divided by 2, and 2, a sub 1 is the first row, that's 11, um, and there's my n again, so there's the 30, minus 1, and then d is what I'm adding each time, so I'm going from 11 to 15 to 19, so I'm adding 4 each time. So when you run the calculation, you're going to end up with 2,070, so that means there are 2,070 seats in this section. So if I charge $10 a ticket, uh, I'm going to make $20,700 if I fill all those seats up. Okay. Okay, so instead of a word problem here, I'm just asking for the sum of the first 31 terms of this arithmetic sequence. How do I know it's arithmetic? I'm adding 2 each time. Okay, so I'm adding 2 each time. All right, so I'm going to use that big long formula because that's what I'm going to use all the time for an arithmetic sequence because I don't have to know the last term in order to do that. So um, let me just write it down here, and then we'll go ahead and fill the numbers in. 
Okay, I want to find S sub n, so S sub 31. I want to find the sum of the first 31 terms, so 5 plus 7 plus 9 plus 11 plus 13 and so on. So n is 31. A sub 1 is 5, it's the first term. n is the number of terms, 31. And d is what I'm adding each time, which in this case is 2. So I run the calculation, and I end up getting 1,000. 85. So if I added up the numbers 5 plus 7 plus 9 plus 11 plus 13 plus 15 for 31 terms like that, I would get 1,085. Okay, I want to find the sum of the first 19 terms of this sequence. Now the only difference here is usually, like the last example, I stopped here. I only showed you this much. But I'm actually giving you the last term in this sequence. So Theoretically, you could use either one of the formulas that I gave to you, but it's just best to always go with that longer one. It's given to you on the formula sheet, so you might as well just use it so you don't have to worry about the other one. So um, I'm going to go ahead and write it out. Okay, so let's fill it in. So S sub 19 equals... 19 over 2 times 2 times the first term, which is 3, plus n, which is 19, minus 1 times d. I'm adding 6 each time. So you can end up with the answer 1,083. So if you add up the first 19 terms of the sequence given, you end up with 1,083. Okay, so the title of these notes is Sigma or Summation Notation. Um, this looks very complicated. It's actually probably going to be one of the easier things we do in Algebra 2. Summation is something that's done quite often as sigma, and this is called a sigma right there. Uh, it's a Greek symbol. Is the symbol used to denote it. Um, you got a lot of stuff going on here. Why don't you just copy it down in your notes. You can hit pause if you want here and just go ahead and copy it down in your notes. The best way to learn this is just to watch an example. Um, so just go ahead and hit pause, finish it, and then go ahead and play the video again. Okay, so here's an example. Uh, I want to take um, the expression x plus 3, and I'm going to use that to create, um, create my sequence. And I'm going to go from the first to the fifth term. That's what these numbers mean here. So I'm going to make a table. Anytime you see a sigma, you make a table. It's the first thing you do. I'm going to put my variable on the top. So my variable is right there. It's x. And my expression is going to go down here at the bottom. That's x plus 3. Okay, so now I make a table. And on the top row, it goes from the low number to the high number. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's the first through the fifth terms of the sequence. Well, I don't know my sequence yet. I have to create the sequence. So my first term is I'm going to take that, that 1 and I'm going to plug it in down here on the bottom. So 1 plus 3 is 4. So the first term of my sequence is 4. Now I take the second number, which is 2. 2 plus 3 is 5. 5 is the second number of my sequence. 3 plus 3 is 6, 7, and 8. And now I've created my sequence. Sigma means sum. Anytime you see a sigma in math, it means sum. Now some of you might be... Um, familiar with it because if you ever use Microsoft Excel, there's a sigma button up in the toolbar. Sigma means sum, so you can actually add up cells in a spreadsheet using that, that button. Um, so now what I want to do is I'm going to take 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8, which is my sequence, and I'm going to add them up. So 4 plus 5 plus 6 plus 7 plus 8 is 30, and there's my answer. Okay, let's do another quick sigma notation problem. You'll notice that I don't start with 1 on the bottom here. So I see a sigma, I make a table. Up on top goes my variable, which is a. On the bottom is my expression, a squared minus 1. That's going to create my sequence. And I'm going to start at the third um, term, and I'm going to go all the way up to the eighth term. There's where I start, there's where I end. Okay, so now I take each one of those numbers, plug it into the equation, or to the expression a squared minus 1. So 3 squared is 9, minus 1 is 8. 
4 squared time or 4 squared is 16 minus 1 is 15 and I'm going to go ahead and fill in the rest of it and then the last term here 64 8 squared 64 minus 1 is 63 and now my sequence is 8 15 24 35 48 63 I'm going to take those numbers and just add them up 8 plus 15 is 23 plus 24 is 47 plus 35 is 82 plus 48 is 130 plus 63 is 193 so the answer to the problem is 193 so we've discussed uh, arithmetic ser series how about geometric series well arithmetic series are easy because you're really only using one formula for a geometric series you actually have actually have to determine what kind of a series it is. There are series that the numbers get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller so that eventually you're adding up numbers that are so small that they don't mean anything to the um, to the sum anymore and there are other sequence or the other series where you're adding bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger numbers so that you never actually get to a point where you kind of reach that that threshold where you're not really adding anything anymore you just keep adding bigger numbers Okay, so the first slide here, I have um, the finite geometric sequence, which means it has an end. So let's say I'm going to the 12th term or the 15th term or the 25th term. That's a finite geometric sequence, which is different than an infinite geometric sequence. An infinite geometric sequence doesn't have an end, um, but this one does. And I get the clue from S sub n. So let's say if, if the question said find S sub 10, that's the clue, oh, I have an end. I'm only going to the 10th term, so that means I'm going to stop there. Okay, so there's nothing new here, S sub n. You've seen that in an arithmetic sequence. Um, that just means sum, a sub, a sub 1, n, and r. You've seen all those variables before. Okay, so now this is the formula for an infinite geometric sequence. It has no end. Um, and in your notes, it really should say S sub infinity right there. Um, so S sub infinity means you're finding the sum of an infinite geometric sequence. It keeps going and going and going and keep adding and adding and adding and adding and adding and you never ever stop. Um, the, the thing that is going to make it easy to spot is it's either going to say find S or find S sub infinity. Either, either way it's going to be said. Or it'll say find the sum of the infinite geometric sequence and then it'll give you the sequence. Okay, so I want to find the sum of the first 10 terms of this sequence, 1, 3, 9, 27. I'm multiplying by 3 each time. So I'm going to use one of the um, series formulas. In this case, I'm going to use the finite geometric series formula because I'm only going to the 10th term. All right, so I'm going to use this formula here. So I'm going to find S sub 10. A sub 1 is 1. 1 minus R is 3 to the nth all over 1 minus R. Well, R is really 3, so let me just plug that back in. Sorry about that. Okay, so the most important thing here is probably dealing with the parentheses. The way I usually put these in the calculators, I'll usually put the numerator in first get an answer for all this, hit enter, and then I'll divide that by 1 minus 3. Now the one thing you have to remember is that needs to go in parentheses. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and run the calculations, and I get 29,524. So if I add up the numbers 1, 3, 9, 27, and then keep going until I get to the 10th term, I would end up with the sum 29,524. Okay, so I want to find S sub 8 um, of this sequence, 2, negative 4, 8, negative 16. I see the signs going back and forth, positive, negative, positive, negative, so that means my R is going to be negative. So to get from 2 to negative 4, I'm going to multiply by negative 2. Same thing here, same thing here. Okay, so... Am I going to use the finite or infinite geometric series formula? And the answer is finite because I'm only going to the eighth term. All right, so I'm going to use the formula. And now I'm going to plug in my numbers. So find S sub 8. A sub 1 is 2. 1 minus 
Now, r is negative, so it's very important that I put this stuff in parentheses like this. If you don't, you will get the wrong answer. On the bottom, I'm going to end up doing 1 plus 2, because a negative times a negative is going to be a positive. And just in case you, you forget, put your parentheses around there. You can end up with the answer negative 170. Um, one thing I'd like to point out as you're putting these in the calculator is some people would like to look at this and say a negative times a negative is a positive, so that's 1 plus 2 to the 8th. You can't do that. you got to raise your exponent first. got to follow PEMDAS, uh, which is the order of operations. So you got to do your exponent first, then do your adding and subtracting. Do not change the sign here. Down here it's okay because you're just adding numbers. You're not raising anything to an exponent or anything. So that's okay, but up here you cannot do that. So just be mindful of that. So we've done a few examples of finding um, a sum of a finite geometric sequence. What about an infinite geometric sequence? All right, so uh, I have this small sequence, 150, 30, and 6. I want to find the sum. Now this sequence can go on forever. And in order to find out what r is, I'm going to take the second number and divide it by the first number. Now some of you will be able to figure it out that you're actually multiplying by a fraction, which is one-fifth, but you would find that out by doing 30 divided by 150. And in your calculator, you're going to get 0.2 or one-fifth as a fraction. Okay, so let's go ahead and find the, the sum. So since it's infinite, and I know that because it's not telling me where to stop, and the numbers are getting smaller each time, I want to find the sum of uh, the formula a sub 1 over 1 minus r. So I can really write s or s sub infinity either way. It doesn't matter. So s sub infinity equals a sub 1 divided by 1 minus r. And for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to use the decimal here. And my answer is going to be 187.5. Now, you might say, how does an infinite geometric series reach a number and stop? Well, it's kind of like the same thing as when a graph rode along an asymptote. Remember when a graph would come down and it kind of rides along that dashed line like that, and it gets closer and closer but never actually hits it? Same thing is true here. I go 150, and then 30, and then 6, and then whatever I get next, 1.2, and then whatever this next smaller number is, and then the next smaller number. And eventually, once I get out to, you know, 30 numbers, I'm adding numbers that are so small that they really don't matter anymore to the sum. So just like I approach the asymptote up here in the graph, I approach 187.5 with the sum here. And it doesn't matter. I can keep adding numbers to infinity, and I will never ever reach 187.5, but I will get close to it.